Hey, it's Jim from the Woodworking Corner. Definitely one of the most useful jigs or tools to have in your shop is a crosscut sled for your table saw. I've seen a lot of uh, crosscut sleds online, and um, yeah, they all basically have the same function, but the one that I got a lot of inspiration from was actually Tamar's video, uh, especially with uh, the clamps here, making it so that they can get in close, but not too close to the blade, so you can work with small parts. So what makes up the parts to a good crosscut sled? All it is is really a base, a front fence, a back fence, and a couple of runners. So with all this said, let's make a sled. The size of your sled really depends on your preference. Some people need to use both sides of the fence when they're cutting pieces. Other people just want it more for the length and they chop off one side. Uh, the depth of it really only depends on also how, how deep you want this without getting crazy where it's going to tip over. I didn't actually get a video of me cutting the base, but the, as far as the base is concerned, whatever size you want the overall length to be, when you make your first cut, oversize that from there. You don't want to make it final dimension just yet. After cutting the base, I cut the two strips for, for this fence. Now the height doesn't have to be perfect, but also make it a little bit oversized as well. When I finally finished this fence, it ended up being shorter than I wanted, but that was only because I wanted to use the stop lock. After cutting the pieces for the fence, you want to glue them up so they have a chance to dry so you can work on the next steps. Another great idea that Tamar had was using a level while she was gluing up her fence. This kept the fence as straight as possible while it was uh, drying. While the Here I'm cutting up the pieces for the front fence and then gluing them up as well. It's time to make the runners. As I was making the runners, I was using plywood first to get a space, to get the correct spacing in the miter slot before cutting the actual cutting board. Now using the base, you want to lay out lines for your kerf, the miter slots, and any T-tracks that you want to have inside the base. So the purpose of After you've laid out your lines, then you want to cut out your T-tracks. You could use the table saw and the dado stack, which probably would be easier to do than the way I did it. But um, I ended up using the router instead. Nice using scrap pieces of wood and double-sided tape, I got my groove. And then using a three-quarter inch bit, made my uh, channel for my T-tracks. So now we can cut our base to final length. Just so be cautious of where your layout lines are. It's time to measure for the back fence and run it through the table saw to get a nice clean edge. Don't forget to add the chamfer so there's a place for the sawdust to go when you're making cuts. To add the T-track to the fence, we have to run it through the table saw. Here I would recommend probably just using the table saw and a single blade considering the width of the fence, then making a couple of passes to dial in the width of the T-track to get a perfect fit. Now is a good time to add the runners to the bottom of the base. The runners are less in height than the miter slots, so I'm using washers to raise them up so they are proud of the saw base. Next, I add some double-sided tape to the runners. Using a table saw as a guide, I carefully lower the base onto the runners, making sure the base is squared to the table saw fence. Then all you have to do is remove the base and, and countersink some screws in the bottom. After that is done, give it a whirl to make sure it slides nicely. Next is to clean up the front fence. One thing to remember is make sure you don't get it in the way of the T-tracks. Even though they're not in the way of the T-tracks here, they do get in the way of the clamps coming on and off. So that was a mistake I made while building this one. I clamp it down and make some pilot holes in the bottom and drive in a couple of screws. Flipping it over, I just add a couple more for added support. Next, I measure and cut the T-track for the base. The T-track is aluminum, so it is safe to cut with regular woodworking tools and blades. And there is the layout for the T-tracks. Now we get to make our first cut into our base. We cut through the base, but making sure not to go more than three quarters of the way through the base. Now we have to attach the back fence to the base. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the screw on the right side, and we're gonna use a square and our new, newly formed cut in the base and we're gonna try and get the fence 90 degrees, then clamp down on this side. Okay. 
One method we could use to get this thing perpendicular, to get the blade perpendicular to the fence is to use the five cut method. I did a whole video here, here on how to do that. Uh, definitely watch that one out. And it's, uh, it goes step by step on how you can dial in this fence to get a perfectly, perfectly perpendicular to the blade. Once we got our fence dialed in to the way we like, we're gonna go back to the, the level trick again, and we're gonna use the level to clamp the fence and the level together while we drive screws in from the bottom to make sure that the fence stays as flat as possible during the installation. And next we're building the track so we do our angle cuts. We need a piece of wood about yay long so it can, so it can pivot this way. Using a couple of T-bolts and a couple of handles, we're gonna make it in here. So distance wise, so you're somewhere right about here. So about there, we're gonna draw a line, draw out a couple of holes, bring it over to the router table and then, and then router out a channel for it. Unfortunately, I don't have the video of where I drilled the holes and made my first pass on the router table. But basically what I did is drill the hole here, drill the hole here, drew a line across, and then using a straight bit at the router, I, I cut a channel between the two points. This way it gives the, the fence a chance to move in any angle I want it to go. My first pass was not wide enough for the T-bolt, so I'm making another pass to make the channel wider. After that, I round over the end away from the blade and give everything else a nice end. And I test fit the miter block, rail, whatever you want to call it, and give some washers to it, then give the knobs a spin. And finally, I add a blade guard all the way here in the back. Okay, it took me a little while to get it situated just right, so I didn't want to waste your time by showing you that part. But basically what I did is I had my, my angle, my digital angle ruler here set to 45. So I placed that here and I set this angle to 45, lock it in. And what I can do is I want to cut this block to be my guard for back here. I wanted to cut that on a 45, so I wanted to make both sides even. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock this in. I'm going to use this for a stop block on the other side. So I tighten that down too. And then this is nice and tight. And we're going to give this a, a little cut and then we'll reverse it and cut the other side. I got two 45s from my, uh, my guard in the back. Okay, final step is to install a safety block using a few uh, playing cards to lift it up so this way it doesn't get caught on the edge here. And making sure that my uh, pilot holes are not going to get in the way of the blade. I'm going to just clamp it. Now all there's left to do is to uh, clean it up, give it a good wax, and she should be ready to go. A simple and effective way of making a 90 degree crosscut slide for your table saw.